Hello, it's Dorian, and thanks for tuning in to Dot Slash. Today I want to talk about flat packs, and I'm going to explain what they are, how they work, and why you would want to use them. Flat packs use a combination of different technologies like bubble wrap and OS tree to create a containerized environment for applications to run in. Now imagine this blue box is your operating system, it's your computer. What Flatpak does using bubble wrap is it creates a sandbox, a container for your Flatpak application to run in along with its dependencies. And yes, that means if your Flatpak application has any dependencies, it will also need to download and install those as well. And this is where the OS tree technology comes into play because any dependencies that you download can also be used by other Flatpak applications. Another advantage the OS tree technology brings is that any updates that you have are atomic and it will only update what you need. It will not re-download all the dependencies. It will not re-download the entire Flatpak application. It will download bits and pieces. It's basically like running Git for Flatpak applications. Now these applications in the sandbox are completely isolated. They can't see what other users are on your system. They can't access other running processes and they're isolated from your devices and your file system and your network. Now, of course, this would be completely useless if you're running a web browser and you can't access the network or a document editor and you can't access your file system. So what Flatpak has is a per application permissions list. So by default, whatever application you're installing will have a predefined set of permissions in order to let the application do what it needs to do. I'll also go over how you can see what permissions a Flatpak application has and how you can change them. So the first thing you're going to want to do on any operating system is just install Flatpak itself. If it doesn't show up in your distros package manager, you can just open up a terminal and sudo apt install flatpak or dnf install flatpak whatever distro you're using just install the package flatpak after that head over to flathub.org and click on the quick setup here in this example i'm using a gentoo machine but you can use any distro that you want so just choose your distro from here i'll just say debian for example and it'll tell you the different steps that you need to do in order to get flatpak up and running Note step four here, restart your system. Make sure you do that before you try to install any flat packs. Most distros will have this already included and built in with their package manager. So if you're using KDE Plasma, the Discover package manager, Pop OS's Pop Shop, or GNOME Software Center here, you can see if I go ahead and search for Spotify, for example, I can click on it and you can see if you scroll down here, it says it's sandboxed and it's from Flathub. So I can just go ahead and click install and it'll install it like a regular application. You can also go on the flathub.org website and you can search for different applications that are available. Just pick one, hit install, and you'll see the option open with software install. Hit OK and it'll go ahead and open it up in software. And then you can just scroll down, verify, yep, this is the Flathub one, go ahead and install. And by the way, if your distro has the built-in integration into your software center, it will also automatically run the updates in the background, just like regular packages. So here I am back in Gentoo, just to show you another reason why you'd want to use flat packs. I have LibreOffice installed here, so I'll go ahead and open that. And we can see it is version 6.4.7.2, version 6.4. Now, if you're using a fixed release distro, you're using something like Debian that doesn't update often, maybe you want a newer version of LibreOffice, for example. Since Gentoo doesn't have the built-in software manager integration, I'll show you how to do things in the terminal here. So it's pretty easy. I can just do flat pack search if I don't know the name and I can go LibreOffice and it'll show me all the different results that come up with that search term. Of course, it's just LibreOffice. So I'm gonna go ahead and install LibreOffice. Found a reference, yes, there's two options. I'm gonna pick the app slash org version. And now here you can see it told me what the default permissions are. So I'm gonna go ahead and say yes and let that install. So now that's done. So let's go ahead and have a look at my applications now. If I go to Office, you can see I have two sets of LibreOffice because I have the original one and I have the Flatpak version as well. So if I go ahead and open this one, we can see that it is version 
7.1. And you can also see the note here that it is a flat pack. So this is great for getting newer versions on an older distribution or a distribution that doesn't update as frequently. Obviously, if the version you have now works, then you can just keep using it, but maybe there's some new features you want or some new files you're working on that aren't compatible with the version you have. So this is an option. Another reason would be, say, only Office, which is not available in the repository. I can install it and use it as a flat pack. Same goes with Steam. Steam actually comes as a flat pack and it works very well, by the way. I've had no issues running any games from the flat pack. It works just like it does if it was installed normally. And of course, like you would expect, if you go to open a file, you can access your documents normally. There you go, all there. That's not supported in only Office because it's a configuration file, but regardless, you can see how you can access your home directory, no problem to open and save files. So now let's look at Flatpak permissions. There's two ways of doing this. You can use a GUI or you can do it through the terminal. There's actually a Flatpak application called FlatSeal, which allows you to edit the permissions for all your Flatpak applications. So you can use either your graphical package manager or the terminal to go ahead and install FlatSeal. Once installed, just go ahead and find it in your system. And here it is. The icon looks like a roll of tape. And then in here, you'll have a list of all your installed Flatpak applications. So you can go ahead and choose one. And here are all your permissions for everything laid out graphically. So you can go ahead and turn these on and off as you see fit. If you're not sure what a setting is, you can go ahead and look at the Flatpak documentation. But here we have file systems, which is something that you might want to change. As you see here, all system files, host. So you can go ahead and turn off all system files, turn on all user files, and now the application will only have access to the home folder. If you've messed around with this a lot and you're not sure what the settings were initially, there's a reset button up here. Just hit that and it'll put it back to its default settings. You can also click here and add custom folders if you wish, but there's a lot more settings here you can go ahead and play around with if you see fit. And this is something you can do right after you install a flat pack if you want to truly sandbox the application and restrict it right off the bat. Another way is through the terminal. So now if you want to see the permissions of a certain flat pack application, you can go flat pack list. And let's say we want to see the permissions that LibreOffice has, but you need the application ID here. So we're going to copy that. We're going to go flat pack info show permissions and that. So now these are all things that you can look up on the website. I'll bring that up in a second so we can do some override commands, but it's showing how it can access the network, the display, audio, and the file system equals host, which means it can access the entire host file system. So let's say, for example, we want to change that. So if you just do a search on the web for Flatpak override, you'll get to the Flatpak command reference. And from here, we can go down and we can see all the different permission settings, search, repair, all that stuff. But what we want is Flatpak override. So here's the override option. So as you can see, the commands are Flatpak, override, the options, and the app ID. You should also specify dash dash user because you want only the user settings to be changed and not system wide. Otherwise, you need pseudo permissions. So let's go ahead and scroll down because what we want is file system. So file system equals file system, which can be home, host, host OS, etc. We only want the home directory. Currently, it's the entire host, and we don't want that. So what we have to do is also say no file system host so that we can exclude that. So let's go ahead and do flat pack user override no file system equals host and the application name and then we're going to go and change this to home take out the no give it permissions to the home directory now we're going to go ahead and show these permissions again and now you can see file system equals home and it excludes host so now let's go ahead and open libreoffice again and now if we go open, we have a home folder, but if you go back here, home, the root, and it looks like we can access everything on the system, but this is not the host. This is the container. So we're no longer able to access the actual host file system anymore. You can still go to your documents and you can still access your files that you have in your home folder. But if you go into here, let's just, for example, etc, 
and we want OS release. Let's open that. It should say Gentoo, but it says freedesktop.org flatpak runtime because this is the container that we're browsing, no longer our file system. So for any other settings, audio, devices, whatever, feel free to browse that documentation. It's all there, it tells you what to do. If you don't really care about that stuff, you just want to use newer applications, then flat packs are the way to go. It's an easy way to get new applications on an old system. The other alternative is snaps, but I personally don't like snaps. I don't like the way that it's been set up and I don't like how each application is on its own little loop, which showed up in your file systems. Flatpak is just an elegant way to containerize your system. It uses OS tree to update, so it's super efficient. If you'd like to see more on how Linux does things and different distribution reviews, don't forget to check out my channel. Click on like if you like the video and don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications. If you'd like to support my channel, you can head on over to patreon.com slash dorian dot slash. A big shout out and thank you to my past, present and future patrons. Thank you very much for watching and until next time. Bash on.